Drones are very versatile, as they can go anywhere in the air. That said, they are not very efficient. It takes much more energy to lift itself up than to roll on the ground. That's why we use cars and not flying vehicles, for now. But for cars, you need a lot of maintained roads, tunnels, bridges, etc. While a drone doesn't need all these complicated things, it flies over everything. It flies over mountains, rough terrains, rivers, and such. That's why we should combine the advantages of both UAVs and cars. So that's what I did. I made a fine car. I started by taking apart a wooden drone I made a while back. I will use everything on the old drone and put it in the new one. The four motors, four ESCs, the flight controller, the receiver, and if you're confused, go see my video on quadcopter basics, where I explain everything. I took out all of the bolts and nuts holding the old drone together. The quadcopter of this build will be a quad plus, as they're easy to build and weigh less than H frame quads. So I made some plans with distances and started cutting and sending the arms. After a lot of sanding with a file, I found a way to mount the two DC motors at the back with two zip ties and existing holes on the motor. The motor shafts hit each other if I mounted them on the main arm, so I had to extend their mounts with a piece of wood. I glued that piece together, but it's better not to as it will break easily under shocks. I made a test fit with the props to see if I had enough space for the flight controller in the middle. It seemed fine. The brushless motor shafts protrude underneath, so to mount them I had to carve out an indentation in end of the arms with my Dremel. But remember to put safety on, even for a Dremel. The indentation worked perfectly and the motor sat flush. I then made the motor wheel controller using an Arduino, a L293D, and a perf board. I made a separate video on this controller, the link is in the description below. I used this board as a template to make other pieces of plywood to mount in between the arms, flight controller and wires. I used bolts and nuts and also standoffs to assemble the plates together. This is what it will later look like. The next step was to join the arms and plates together. I used small wood screws for each arm. It's better to put two on the same arm to prevent it from moving, but my method worked and it held fine. The frame being done, I moved on to wiring all the electronics. I started with the brushless motors. I cut the wires to length as they would take too much space. I stripped them and pre-soldered them. I did the same with the ESCs. I then prepared pieces of heat shrink tube to protect the solder joint and prevent any short circuit. I put them over the wires before soldering. It was then time for the soldering. But remember that the motor spin in a certain direction. If it spins in the wrong direction, you can reprogram the ESC with BL Heli Suite or just swap two wires from the motors. This method is much easier, so don't shrink all the shrink tubes on the joint. Shrink only one and test later if they're going in the right direction. I then mounted the motors on the ends of the arms. You can use screws, but a much easier way is to use zip ties. They're the easiest way. Tighten them on the opposing sides though, as to hold the motor well in place. That done, I moved on to configuring the flight controller with Betaflight. I changed the frame type, tested the spinning of the motors, and radio commands. All my motors spinned in the right direction luckily, so I now heat shrunk the other two tubes for each motor. To protect and contain the wires, I stuck them on the arms of tape. It also looks cool. I stuck the flight controller in the middle with the orientation. It has an arrow to indicate which way is forwards. I put the battery plate on top and this is the drone part finished, well almost. The propellers I wanted to use were a tiny bit too big, but I had a plan B, smaller props. I charged the battery and it was ready for the maiden flight. see there's a problem. So after a bit of troubleshooting I found that one of the brushless motors reset itself automatically in flight. So I took it off, cut the wires and used a similar motor. 
I mounted the new motor the same way, pre-soldered the wires, and soldered them. As you can see, after changing the motor, it flew much better. But this is just a regular quadcopter, for now, until it became a flying car. To achieve this, I firstly added a small caster wheel with zip ties in the front. I then zip tied the two DC motors on the mounts, made for this purpose. And as you saw, I used zip ties to mount all the motors on this flying car. Very cheap, very versatile, and simple. It was then time to test the car part of his flying car. The car is controlled over Bluetooth using a phone, while the flying is radio controlled using a transmitter. So it drives very well. Does it fly? Yes it does. So this is indeed a flying car. Now I can improve quite a lot of things on this design, like the DC motor placements, which limit the push of the propeller, but I hope this prototype demonstrates my point. Now that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time.